So I, I have a word for tonight, though. I want you, if you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Matthew 24. It's Palm Sunday. Our Lord came into Jerusalem to a procession of palms. If, if, it, if it gives room, we may read that scripture later, but I, I, I don't feel as much as that would be effective. I don't feel that's the word for us tonight. Um, we were going to acknowledge it. Pa Pastor Owen was going to read it. And then when the worship went in the direction it did, we just did not feel that it was the right time. But I want to go to Matthew 24, and we're going to read uh, verses 9 through verses 14. Now, these are primarily known as eschatological verses, meaning end times verses. And we know people debate the end times, and they have all kinds of theories. I'm not preaching eschatology tonight. I'm actually preaching on this subject, anointed and offended. Because the Spirit of God said to me, I, I don't know, is anybody else bad with directions? I'm really bad with directions. So if you see me visiting a city or you see me visiting somewhere, you you'll likely see me like this walking around. And sometimes saying people would drop me a pin. And that pin saves my life because now I know how to get from here to there. And I heard the Holy Ghost say, offense is like a pin in the realm of the Spirit. It locates you. And he said, for this next level I'm taking people to, they need to identify the offense in their life because offense is locating them. I want to pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of the Lord. It is alive. It is powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And I pray now that you would anoint my lips of clay, that I would speak uh, as your oracle, as your ambassador, God. I pray that um, I would have clear direction and clear precision and clear accuracy on what you, the Spirit of the Lord, would say to the church. I arrest every spirit of confusion. I arrest every spirit spirit of distraction. I arrest every spirit of deception that would try to blanket the stream or blanket us in person. And Father, I thank you that we will navigate offense and get the victory over it. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 24 and verse number 9. Let's go. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Let's pause and say, Lord, this is, this is uh, the Lord talking to us. A and we have to understand as the Lord walked into what we would mark as Palm Sunday while he was walking into what looked like a celebration. It was the beginning of a yielding. And, and I believe what this Bible is teaching us tonight is it's saying that there is going to be a persecution. There is going to be a hatred that happens in your life for the name of Jesus. And I'm concerned that we become a generation that thinks that ministry is about celebration. I want to tell you the anointing will cause people to be angry with you. The anointing will cause people to get offended with you. The anointing will cause family members to ridicule you, to misunderstand you. I don't know if anybody at ATL Hub has ever been persecuted by your family because you love Jesus. And it was frustrating and difficult and you felt like, well, why are they doing this to me? I just love the Lord. I'm just speaking in tongues. But can I tell you, Jesus prophesied it. Let's forget, let's not forget the greatest prophet that ever lived is the Lord Jesus. And he said, you're going to be hated for my name's sake. It's part of the call and part of the assignment, verse 10. And then, and then many, someone say many, many shall be offended and betray one another and shall hate one another. Now, I need you to understand this is applicable to the saints in the house of God. We expect people out there to hate us. We expect people out there to misunderstand us. But I've learned in life, it's never the betrayal of somebody far off that is hurtful. It's the betrayal of somebody up close that is hurtful. And so the devil understands if he wants to rock you and he wants to cause pain in your life and grief in your life, he will cause somebody to be offended offended with you but offense is a location device in the realm of the spirit he said many will be offended I believe we're living in the hour where the scripture is being fulfilled that many are being offended in this hour and the Bible said offense will lead to betrayal because offense is the gateway to betrayal offense is the gateway to betrayal let's read and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. I believe there's no need to, to expound on that because we're seeing that. If you're awake, you're seeing that. Verse number 12, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I, I can remember in the 1990s when revival was breathing across the land and uh, you didn't want to go to a church that said they had the Holy Ghost if they didn't pray for folk. And I can remember special gatherings on Friday nights and Saturday nights where the church would be slain under the power of God. But now we've moved away from that. Now 
we want to be relevant. Now we want to be contemporary. Uh, now we want uh, we want to do these things. You know, I, I'm not trying to be ugly tonight, but I'm probably going to say some things. Uh, several times recently, I've been in gatherings and I've seen pastors' wives that uh, you know what they're wearing. Uh, I, I, it leaves very little to the imagination. And I don't understand it because there was a day in which we wouldn't, have go, we wouldn't have come up on the platform and you could see our body parts. But now we're okay with it. And we wonder why don't we have the anointing of God? Why isn't God moving? Because sensuality is moving. And when sensuality is moving, it will speak to your emotions and speak to your flesh. You will be moved upon, but you will not be relocated in the realm of the spirit. This is why you can shout and dance and run in certain gatherings, but you are not relocated in the realm of the spirit because we are yielding to a sensual demon and we're acting sensual when we should be acting consecrated because we lost the ancient wells of anointing in the modern church you should not have to be told don't wear certain things if you're a preacher, male or female, or you're going to make announcements, male or female, or you're going to sing, male or female, you should check from all angles. You should look in the mirror and have another mirror in front of you. And look, if I fall out, is my booty going to be showing? If I roll over here, is my cleavage going to be showing? I don't, don't come up and try to give me a prophetic word and your cleavage is showing. The devil is a liar. Come on. Don't be leading worship and I can see your booty. The devil is a liar. Why have we become okay with this stuff? And then we wonder why demons don't obey us because they're mocking us. They're laughing at us. We're speaking in tongues but there's no movement in the realm of the spirit. We are lifting our hands but there's no movement in the realm of the spirit. And now we've decided we want to be unlawful. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me. Be quiet. I remember being in services where people were speaking. I remember I was preaching one time. And there was no movement at that time of the Holy Ghost to shout. And a woman took off shouting. And this was back before wonderful LED walls. And there was a projector set up because we were, we were having a resurrection. I think it was resurrection. It was some big weekend. And we were, had too many people to fit in our church building. So we had moved to a hotel ballroom. And the woman took off shouting. But as she was shouting, I felt she was not in the spirit. So she shouted and shouted and shouted until she knocked out the projector. And I said, stop it. Everybody look. I said, that's not in the spirit. It's in the flesh. Stop. And I, she got mad. I told us to take her out. I remember those days. I remember the days where people would stand up in services and start manifesting and yelling and screaming. It wasn't when the preacher said, okay, y'all, we're going to get the tarps out and we're going to do deliverance. No, I remember the real Holy Ghost when people started manifesting during the preaching, when people started manifesting during the worship. There was not a deliverance section of the service. Deliverance just broke out when the temperature got to a certain level in the realm of the spirit. But we don't understand that anymore because we become sensual and not spiritual. The devil is a liar. Um, the love of many shall wax cold. I believe we're seeing that. Verse number 13. And they, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 14. This is what Coco was singing about tonight in this gospel of the kingdom. Do you know that Jesus spoke of the kingdom repetitiously? And there are, two, uh, there are two types of kingdom references. The kingdom of God, which is comprised of God's way of doing things. It, it is the, the way God thinks. It is the entry into the realm of the kingdom of heaven. But it is not the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the actual dwelling place of God Almighty. And so Jesus preached the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, because you can't get in the kingdom of heaven without first being a citizen in the kingdom of God. And Jesus was preaching that repetitiously. We preach a gospel of the church. 
This is why we're angry. Well, you took my member. You took one. We got the revelation that people are kingdom citizens and I can't take your member and you can't take my member because now we're kingdom citizens. It's a different revelation. And so it's amazing. Some leaders will fight over people and they don't have the ability. Oh, help me. Holy Ghost. They don't have the ability to grow people on the level of where they need to go, but they want to hold on to them at their own detriment. You know why? Because somewhere in their childhood, they did not feel affirmed and now they've gone into ministry not to change lives and help people but to seek affirmation and because we're living in the social media generation I can post it as soon as I do it and get likes and shares and feel I'm really moving something but the problem is sir or ma'am respectfully when you speak nothing moves in the realm of the spirit I don't want a social media anointing. I want a kingdom anointing. That devils obey me. That the spirit of God moves when I speak. That's the anointing I want. The anointing that raises the dead. The anointing that delivers the oppressed. The anointing that opens blind eyes and empties wheelchairs and revives dead places. The anointing that shakes nations. That's the anointing I want. But you have to pass through the gateway of offense. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end will come. Offense acts as a GPS pin. It locates our level of love. You know, if I'm really walking in love, I can't stay offended. Uh, now, the Bible tells us offenses will come. We're going to get offended. Someone's going to speak to us the wrong way. Someone's going to cut us off in traffic. Someone's going to preach something that hits us. We're going to get offended. But there is a difference between getting offended and staying offended. And I want to submit to you that when we really walk in love, we move into a place that our love for God is strong than our ability to remain offended. I might be offended for a moment, but I take it to the Lord in prayer. I choose to forgive. Can I tell you, forgiveness is not a feeling, but forgiveness is a choice. And because God forgave me, I choose to forgive my brother and sister. A few years ago, I got caught in this bizarre ministry space where everybody was always discerning everybody else. So it's like you talk to a preacher, it's like, oh, I just discern so-and-so, they're in this sin, and oh, I just, and, and a lot of it was, had truth in it, but it became a distraction. And when the calendar turned this year, the Spirit of God said to me, I want you to draw away from that. I don't want you to partake of that. I don't want you to listen to that. I said, but Lord, what if I go and preach somewhere and the leaders and this leader's there? He said, if I send you there, it's about the people. You're not going there to govern the leader. You're not going there to try to figure everything out. You go and you do your assignment and you leave. This is the year I need you on the wall. This is the year I need you to be correct in your walk. This is the year I need you to be focused in the realm of the spirit. This is the year I need you to labor with other people in the kingdom. I may not like you, but I'm commanded to love you. And if I'm commanded to love you, then I'm pulling for you you. If you're a preacher that I know is backslidden, I'm pulling for you to get back in position. If you're a preacher that I know is lying on folk, I'm pulling for you to get delivered from a lying spirit and start moving in the glory of God. Why? Because we are commanded to love. Offense will locate the level of the love of God in us because when the love of God is in us and working through us, it's bigger than offense. Offense will locate our level of deliverance. You see, when we really get delivered, we get delivered from offense. Can I tell you, the big deliverance you need to stay delivered from offense is you need to be delivered from your own self, from your own thoughts, from your own mind, from your own reputation, that you don't care about your reputation. God has got to deal with all of that inside of you before he can effectively use you. And some of you are praying, Lord, to use me. And the Lord's saying, first, I've got to kill you before I can use you. Offense locates your level of surrender. Can you pray for somebody that cuts you? I remember sitting in one of my spiritual father's meetings. It was packed. You couldn't get a seat. And I was talking to his daughter who was the director of his ministry. And all of a sudden, my spiritual father stopped and said, Ryan, Zona, stop talking. That was bad enough because when that was said, oh, there was about 800 some people in the room. They all looked. But he didn't stop there. He talked for 30 minutes about it. He said to his daughter, Zona, honey, this is why you're not getting your healing because you're not listening to me. I'm up here teaching faith and you're not paying attention. I've told you and I've told the staff, don't be distracting in services. Don't be talking. My God, some of y'all, if I did that when you were on your phone, you'd pass out. 
But he went on for 30 minutes. I sat there. Now, how did you feel? I felt angry. I felt misunderstood. I felt offended. I felt all of the feelings because the thing was this. I wasn't talking about something frivolous. We were talking about a thing that we had to report to the hotel where the convention was concerning how many people were coming to a luncheon. We were, we were essentially working, but this is the thing. When I submitted to him, I didn't submit to him on the good days. I submitted to him on all days, and I believed that God was using my leader. So when my leader was speaking to me for 30 minutes in front of 800 and some people, and I wanted to quit. I had to wait until it was over with, and when it was an appropriate moment, I slipped out of the service. Why did you slip out of the service? Because I needed to get my mind together. I needed to get my mouth together. I needed to get my spirit together, because what had just happened to me did not feel good. The devil was saying, you just got embarrassed in front of 800 and something people, but what I couldn't see at that time was that man was also going to put me on a stage in front of thousands of people, preaching alongside of Shambach and Hagen and all those people, and if I would have quit over a 30 minute rebuke in front of hundreds of people I would have never been put on a stage in front of thousands of people and I'm afraid that this generation doesn't understand the power of a rebuke a rebuke can locate you submit is to come under the mission see we were taught stuff like this if we were a member of our church and there was an evangelist preaching the same time as our church was having service that it was unlawful in the realm of the spirit for us to go and listen to the evangelist and not go to our church because our commitment was there. Well, that sounds old school. Well, we, had, we used to have online prayer too. God used to show up and heal cancer too. God used to show up and lay people out for hours at a time too. God used to give people new kidneys in those services too because we understood how to walk this thing out. But in today's world, we want to do what we want, how we want, when we want, say what we want. We want to be half in the world and half in the church and uh, half committed and half uncommitted. And then we want God to use us. And then we're angry when the preachers don't promote us, but you don't even come to service on time. How can we promote you if you can't govern yourself to show up on time and you want to teach nations and preach the nations? and you're consistently 30 minutes late? It says something about your spiritual discipline. Because if I can't trust you, if I said, Cameron, I need you to be over all these papers. Well, but I feel a call to be a prophet. I hear you, but first you're going to be over the papers. Be the prophet of the papers. Well, I've been carrying the papers for a year and nobody used me. Nobody. That, that's just, God is just using that in your life. He's using that to crush out ambition in you. He's using that to crush out this desire to be seen. He's using that to crush out this thing. I want a ministry. I want a ministry. Do you want warfare? Because when you get a ministry, you get warfare. When you get a ministry, you get hated. When you get a ministry, you're not tolerated. When you get, what would happen if you had a ministry and you were broke and you didn't have any money coming and you were preaching for free and you didn't have no Gucci shoes and you couldn't do selfies on Instagram because you were called to the jails. You were called to the prisons. Oh, that God would raise up people that were delivered from ambition in the church. You can't govern people if you can't govern yourself. The Bible said... In Proverbs 18, 19, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. So offense becomes a prison. Many of us are still spiritually at the last level of our previous offense. We got offended because we weren't recognized. We got offended because we weren't called on. We got offended because our gift wasn't discerned. We got offended for these reasons. You, baby, you got to go through the school of separation. To be consecrated means to be separated. Paul taught in a house there are many vessels, vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. If you study the anointing, the anointing was always used for consecration. That's why we don't use different kinds of oil for anointing oil because anointing oil is consecrated oil. It's signifying separation and ministry is about separation I am concerned about a church that thinks we can act any way we want to act and do anything we want to do and God still use us see we need to get back to discipline in the house of God to realize that it is a narrow road that leads to heaven wide is the way and broad is the way that leads to destruction many of us are offended by the Bible and it becomes a prison so we're imprisoned. And because we're imprisoned, we're bound. 
God said to me, tell them their offense is going to locate them in this season. As Jesus was walking into Jerusalem, I believe he had to execute the assignment free from offense. He could have been offended with his accusers, those that lied on him, those that shouted, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. If you're going to serve God, there will be many opportunities for you to be offended with people. I don't know if any of you create content on social media, but I'm always shocked at the freedom in which people speak to other people online. I'm like, if this was real life, you will have two black eyes, but online you all just say and do and li make lives and videos about people and do whatever you want. Jesus could have been offended. How do I serve when I'm angry? When I'm angry with the people of God because I thought I was a prophet and I'm having a meeting and only two people are coming. Or I'm offended because I joined the ATL hub and I was tithing and my finances are still under shipwreck and I don't know how to get out and I'm offended. I'm offended because I got a prophetic word that God was going to raise me up and I've been going through the valley. You see, Jesus could have been stagnated by offense as he was walking to his death on Palm Sunday, but he chose not to be offended with his accusers. Because he had a revelation that it was all part of the plan. Maybe the difficult things you're going through, God sent to you to grow you. He could have been offended with Peter. I would have been. I have this movie in my mind that when Jesus calls for Peter, Peter, do you love me? I can see the heart of Peter beating and if Peter's like most of us he, the, the last time he saw Jesus he was denying Jesus but see the thing is I understand Peter because I find myself in Peter I find myself as a person that will jump out and say oh God I want to do this and then you know I, I'm into day four of the 20 day fast and then I, I, I go and eat Chick-fil-A I, I find myself in that I find myself oh God I want to pray and I set up my schedule and then I fall short four days into it I find myself in that I find myself and Peter and so Jesus is Peter and he calls Peter over I believe Peter has trepidation and fear because Peter is thinking Jesus is going to correct me and then Jesus asks Peter a question Peter do you love me and Peter says yes Lord then feed my sheep and he goes through it three times how many times did he deny Jesus three times I believe with each time that he asked Peter the question he was releasing purpose over pain because if you will notice the answer of Jesus it was about purpose he did not remain offended with Peter can you get over people who let you down perhaps in the final moments of Jesus he could have even been offended with the father why would you think that because Mark 15 said at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice Eloi Eloi lama sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was the first time in the existence of Peter, or rather Jesus, that he had felt a vacancy of the presence of the Father. He could have been offended, but he chose not to. Sometimes we go through moments we don't feel God like we felt God in the last season. There have been seasons in my life where I just said to the Lord, Lord, and boom, downloads began. A few days ago, I'm sitting in my living room. I'm not in particularly deep prayer or pursuit. I'm just casually thinking on the Lord Jesus, and all of a sudden, downloads start coming to me. God catches me up in the spirit, and he begins to speak to me about the state of Texas, and he moves me across aerial view of certain cities, and he said, this is what I want to do in this city. This is what I want to do in this city. When that's done, he takes me to Florida, and he begins to speak to me. I'm like, God, why are you even speaking this? I, I don't know but I'm going to release the words so people can pray over them and partner. Then he speaks to me about Atlanta. Then strangely starts speaking to me about Oklahoma. I say, God, I, I don't have any desire for Oklahoma. But this is the thing that sometimes God wants you to see things because when he shows you something, he now makes you an intercessor for the thing that he's shown you. But you see, I've been through times in my life that God was showing up in such a measure and now I'm in this season. I don't feel him like I felt him in the last season. And sometimes what we do is we become offended 
offended because we don't feel or sense the presence of God and there Jesus is after Palm Sunday on the cross and he says my God my God why is thou forsaken me he could have been offended but he understood God's plan for his life we think well God has left me because I don't feel something but the truth is God has never left you nor forsaken you you know the greatest times in your life is when you got to walk by faith Faith is moving in the invisible. If every one of us saw Jesus and traveled to heaven three times a day, we would have no need of faith. One of the issues we have with this generation in the prophetic and in other areas is that they don't understand the teaching of faith. So they want a prophetic word. We've made prophets fortune telling. Because we don't pray and we don't read our Bibles and we don't seek the face of Jesus. So we don't have any idea what God wants to do in our lives. And so we made prophets fortune tellers that we, we go to them in a substitution for a devotional life. And then we wonder why we're in trouble. We're in trouble because we're building on somebody else's revelation and not our own revelation. The question becomes, how did Jesus stay free? I believe he stayed free because he learned to steward his gaze. And the Lord told me to tell people tonight, you've got to learn in this season how to steward your gaze. What you look at the longest becomes the object of your worship. And many of us have become gripped by idolatry because our gaze is fixed upon ourselves. Our gaze is fixed upon our gifting. Our gaze is fixed upon our next opportunity. And so we will breach kingdom laws in order and attempt to push ourselves to the front of the line. Our gaze is the gateway to idolatry. My call, my call, my call. I wonder how many of us have made our call bigger than Jesus. Where are the servants of the church? I remember when we were just excited to be a part of what God was doing in the earth. We didn't have to be at the forefront. We didn't have to be recognized. We didn't have to have special seating. We didn't have to have a seat with our name on. We just wanted to see the move of God. We need to fix our gaze. Jesus fixed his gaze on the Father. He had to go through the procession of palms knowing death was following. Can you walk through a season of decrease in your life and still love the Lord and be unoffended. The question becomes what sustained him? I believe the thing that sustained Jesus was the presence of the Father. I want to ask you tonight or on the replay on YouTube and Facebook at Global Hub, I want to ask you, what does your pursuit of his presence look like? I'm not talking about when you come in here because my fear is for many of us, and I'm including myself in this, that we've gotten used to experiencing his presence in corporate uh, presence. And thank God for corporate presence. But the thing about it is this. We should not be coming together to get our dose of the Holy Ghost on Sunday. We should be dosed up on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday so that by this time now, when we come together, it's an add-on to our devotion through the week. But you see Jesus sustained his operation of the presence of God in his life and we need to understand that it is our responsibility as sons and daughters to spend time at the feet of the father I'm afraid we've lost the art of pursuit and we've outsourced it give me a prophetic word lay hands on me prophesy to me you know I've had people I, I, there have been times I preached and I've laid hands on people, and I've gotten done, and somebody come to me and say, can you pray for me? And the Holy Ghost said, no. I don't like to do it because people get very angry, but this is the thing. I said, I can pray for you, but the Holy Ghost said, no. The Holy Ghost said, he gave you in the service what you needed. And if I pray for you now, I'm praying in the flesh and not in the spirit. So to satisfy what you're going to get offended about, I can pray for you. But I know in my spirit, God's not going to do anything. There have been times where you've asked me, can you pray and see if God speaks to you? And the Lord told me, don't pray for them. They're in a time of pursuit. I remember one time distinctly preaching in Calhoun, Georgia. I laid hands on a little woman, Mother Denine. I was praying for her. And the spirit of God, I called a line for people in financial distress. And I, I was praying this prayer. I said, Lord, God bless. And the Holy Ghost said, stop praying. I said, why? He said, ask her, does she tithe? I'm in the middle of prayer. Lord bless. I said, ma'am, the Holy Ghost just said, do you tithe? I didn't say. I said on the mic. 
The Holy Ghost said, do you tithe? All of a sudden, she forgot how to speak English, and she started stammering, struggling. Well, I got my answer. And I said, ma'am, the Lord said that my prayer is going to be in vain because you're violating the laws of heaven. Generosity is a law of heaven. So if I pray for you, I'm actually out of order. Everything God does in the kingdom has an order. I know people get upset. Well, I don't want to go to a church, and they say that everybody can't pray for everybody. Do you know that's not scriptural? Do you know that Paul wrote an entire chapter in the book of Corinthians 14, how to govern the move of the Spirit? And do you know that anything without a government is Luciferian in nature? Why did Lucifer get kicked out of heaven? Lucifer got kicked out of heaven because he would not obey the rules of heaven. But we get filled with the Holy Ghost and think we can do whatever we want. But the Spirit of God, not, not, not the thing you think is the Spirit of God, but the real Spirit of God is the Spirit of consecration. You don't move like everything else. You don't act like everything else. And here's the thing you need to understand about rebellion. Rebellion is saying, I'm going to do it my way, and I'm going to do it how I want. But the problem is, rebellion is a gateway into the world of witchcraft. And so when we are rebellious and we don't submit to leaders, you know, I've noticed this thing that, that folk that cannot, oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost, Folk that cannot pass the test of submission, they'll begin to do things like, well, God's just calling me for a season to have church in my home. The devil's calling you to do that because you couldn't submit to authority. Now, don't hear what I did not say. I believe that God wants to move in our homes, and I believe that there are home churches sent by God, and I believe there are apostles actually going to build networks of home churches because we're going to see revival even in our homes. But there is a difference in God sending you and you going because you want to be recognized and you won't submit to the order in other people's lives and ministries and so now you just decide in the name of God you're going to do your own thing and then people come under that and they feel something but what they feel is not the real Holy Ghost what they feel is a mixture it's a mixture of what you want to do and some of what God wants to do well how could God show up because wherever there's hunger God will show up We could call a meeting in the strip club, and if people come hungry, God will show up. But that doesn't mean it's God's ordained place for us to meet. Submission is about order. And we've got to learn how to submit to God. Oh, well, uh, Ryan, I do submit to God. I just don't listen to people. The evidence of your submission is your ability to take instruction. I don't want you to lay hands on me, speak no tongues over me, prophesy not a word to me if you have a reputation for being rebellious. Because it's giving witch, ma'am. It's giving warlock, sir. I, I, I don't want to do it. I don't have time for it. I don't need to get deliverance after I went to your meeting. Come on, somebody. I don't need to get prayer after I went to your meeting. I don't need to get prayer after you gave me a prophetic word. The devil is a liar. Look, we've come too far now to turn back and let somebody that's rebellious lay hands on us. We've come too far now to let somebody that is uncovered lay hands on us. We've come too far now to let somebody that hates submission to lay hands on us because everything on earth is submitted to something. Do you understand? It's illegal in the realm of the spirit for seed to produce something not after its own kind that's why GMOs are dangerous for our body because they were not manufactured by God they're illegal in the realm of the spirit but yet we move in familiar spirits and think it's the Holy Ghost because we get used yes baby you're getting used but you're not getting used by the Holy Ghost you're getting used by familiar spirit that's why you feel something but you remain bound you remain frustrated you remain vexed you remain tormented my God my God help us tonight help us Holy Ghost we, we cannot break kingdom laws. We cannot push our way. The Lord said the church needs to get back to presence. I'm excited about the giveaways. I'm excited about the photo booths. I'm excited about the fellowships. But my God, in 2024, when people are shooting people in movie theaters, in 2024, when people can't afford a house anymore, in 2024, when people are bound up with depression and fear and suicide, I need the Holy Ghost again. I need the presence of God again. I don't have time for just a giveaway. I need God. I need God. The church needs to get back to the presence of the Lord. 
And I want to say something respectfully. There are new, no new pathways. See, Sam, we think God is a 2024 God. But the path is ancient. I want to say something respectfully, but the sound is, the sound is mixed in our nation. Respectfully, respectfully, I, the sound is mixed. I, I, I love everybody. I'm not trying to come for anybody, but the sound is mixed. We got a little bit of Holy Ghost and we got a little bit of idolatry. We got a little bit of Holy Ghost and we got a little bit of witchcraft. And we don't know what prophets are real prophets. And some prophets are calling names, but they're also reading palms. And some prophets are over here doing this thing. And, do, and we don't know anymore. We don't know where to go. And you know why? Because we've left the ancient pathways. God did not create new ways to deliver people. It's still the same way. God did not write any new pages in this sacred text. It's still the same pages. God's not coming up with something new to say that's not in this book it's still in the book and yes I believe that God speaks prophetically today but I believe that every prophecy will line up with the Bible sir I want to tell you if somebody prophesies you to divorce your wife the devil is a liar and so is the prophet ma'am I want to tell you if somebody prophesies you to, to divorce your husband now if your husband beats you or cheated on you that's another story but barring those things if somebody gives you a prophetic word like that the devil is a liar if the only word the prophet ever has is about you joining their ministry and leaving where God put you the devil is a liar if the only thing the prophet ever says is strifeful and divisive the devil is a liar if the only way the prophet will prophesy to you is if a $10,000 seed or a $5,000 seed the devil is a liar yes I know we've got land to buy yes I know we've got buildings to build yes I know it's a season to build it but at the same time we've got to walk through the ancient path we are not idolatrous people we are not warlocks we are not witches is we are consecrated and filled with the Spirit of God and on this Palm Sunday God is pricking our hearts he's charging us he's challenging us and many of you think you need deliverance I'm not talking about demons I'm talking about a hard season a dry time but what God is doing is refining you because before he launches you he's got to purify you and instead of praying God get me out you need to pray God take me through We have to understand the art of pursuit. Purpose demands pursuit. It doesn't happen overnight. God said to me, many of us are asking deliverance when we're really in the midst of our assignment. He said, you got to understand, I'm almost done. There's pain associated with your purpose. You see, we think that all pain is demonic, but can I tell you, there's pain to being called because you don't get to do what you want to do. I can remember being 22 and 23 and 24 and 25, and my friends were smoking weed and having sex and hooking up, and I was praying an all-night prayer with Miss Louise. I was going on soul-winning trips. I was preaching on college campuses. I was preaching in the universities. I was preaching in the nursing homes I was preaching in the jails and they were making fun of me they were laughing at me even the Christians were saying he's too deep he's too spooky but baby can I tell you all these years later I'm still in my right mind I've never went bankrupt I've never had a scandal I've never cheated on my wife I've never been divorced so while they were playing I was praying while they were strained I was praying may God burn in us again with old Holy Ghost fire fire of consecration fire separation fire pursuit some of us are praying God get me out and God said I'm taking you through the fire you've got to go through it you've got to move through it you've got to pray through it you've got to press through it I feel in my spirit there's about to be a revival of prayer all night prayer prayer convocation ah, prayer gatherings we're gonna fast and pray we're gonna weep and pray we're gonna seek and pray we're gonna worship and pray prayer recordings are going to rise up prayer gatherings are going to happen prayer networks are going to happen oh god raise up a praying church raise up a church that will pray and prophesy raise up a church that will pray and deliver raise up a church that will pray and give oh yes holy ghost i hear you the lord just said there's a monetary harvest held up but he said giving and prayers 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 
prayers of bringing out as I did for Cornelius. I will do it for you, said the Lord. If you pray and seek my face, if you give according to my spirit, I will do a thing in you. I will bring it speedily, said the Lord. I just saw in the realm of the spirit the building for ATL Hub. God said, if you will make it a house of prayer, I'll loose it quickly. I'll loose it quickly. I'll loose it quickly. He said, I will blow your mind. I will blow your mind. I'll do it in a moment. I'll do it in a moment. God said, when you least expect it, I'll do it. God said, praise until you get the breakthrough. God said, pray until you get the breakthrough. I heard the Lord say, ATL Hub, keep on praying. Global Hub, keep on praying. God said, this is a season to pray and obey. God said, don't let up. Don't give up. You're going to pray your way out, uh, Mamanda. You're going to pray your way into destiny. God said, don't you get offended. I heard the Holy Ghost say, you come too far now. Don't turn back. It's not time to let go. Oh, my God. Come on, keep on praying. Keep on praying. I just felt another level of anointing drop in this building. Come on, play. Come on, play. Come on, play. God said, come on, play. God said, this is going to be a mic pass season. I'm going to use one and then use another and then use another and then use another and then use another. God said, everybody get ready. Everybody get ready. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in you and you and you and you. My God. Keep on playing. Come on, keep on playing. My God. My God. My God. Play, pray online. Pray online. The Lord said, this is not a moment of a one-man show. God said, I'm going to use everybody in this moment. I'm raising up an army. I'm raising up warriors in the realm of the Spirit. My God, my God. Come on, I need you to help me pray through. I need you to help me pray through. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Lord said in this season, the Holy Ghost is going to suddenly drop. Drop on one. Drop on another. Drop over here. Drop over there. Drop in Alabama. Drop in California. Drop in Europe. Drop in Argentina. Drop in South America. Drop in Central America. Oh my God. I heard the Lord say, I'm going to drop in Russia. I'm going to drop in China. I'm going to drop in Israel. I'm going to drop in God's. I said the Lord. I'm going to drop on down. It's a season of the drop down. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. It's a season of the drop down. Come on, pray.